brothers and sisters in Christ, the portion of God's Word that we'd like to meditate on this evening is from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. There we read, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. This is the word of the Lord. A pagan right to banish the cold and the dark. That is how this world looks at the origin of the celebration of Christmas on December 25th. There are any number of sources that will tell you that the ancient Romans celebrated the winter solstice on December 25th. They celebrated it as the day that the light of the sun began to lengthen and bring relief from the cold and the darkness of winter. It's often claimed also that Christians simply stole this date of December 25th for their own purposes. We could get into a long history lesson of why it is that Christians celebrate the birth of Christ on December 25th. But you didn't come here tonight for a history lesson. Even though the events we celebrate are rooted in history, you did not come to receive a lesson in history. And we are not here either to banish the cold and the darkness despite what this world claims. No, here we are tonight. And we are in the words that Paul shared with us in Colossians chapter 1. We are here to give thanks to God the Father. After all, thanks is exactly what we owe to God the Father. We owe God the Father thanks for many things. In fact, every Sunday when we say, I believe in God the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, we sum up all the gifts given by that Heavenly Father. He's given you your body and soul, your eyes, ears, and all your members, your mind, and all your abilities. This Heavenly Father preserves you by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, spouse and children, money and goods, land, cattle, and all you own. He even defends you from all danger and guards and protects you from all evil. All that would be more than enough a reason to give God thanks. But Paul reminds us that on top of all of those blessings that God has heaped upon us, he heaps up even more. It's as if God said, it's too little that I should, should fill your tummy and make sure your body is warm. It's too small a thing that I should give you family and friends for companionship in this life. It's too small that I would give you things to enjoy. I will also open heaven and give you the very best of gifts. I will give you my son. And that's precisely what God has done. The Holy Spirit inspired Paul to remind you that God the Father has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. This same Father has also delivered you from darkness and transferred you to the kingdom of his beloved son. Joy and thanksgiving ought to fill your hearts as you hear those truths. And let me explain why. Paul said that God has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Clearly that inheritance of the saints in light is the eternal life lived in God's presence in heaven. What often surprises me, though, is the uncertainty that I hear from Christians about reaching that eternal home. I've heard Christians, and sometimes even members of congregations I've served, say things like, I hope I make it to heaven. I hope God lets me in. because it assumes there, there must be something that I have to do in order for God to consider me worthy to enter paradise. That attitude, it wonders and it worries because it thinks there may be something that I've neglected. Maybe there's something I've left undone and for that reason God will turn me away at the gates of heaven. 
And yet if that was the kind of certainty that the Christian faith gave to, to sinners like you and me, well then who would want to be a Christian? But here tonight, God makes it very clear that he wants to rule out all such doubts. He does not give you a certainty that's like a flickering candle. And so Paul says that God has qualified you to share in this inheritance. And just think about that. Think about what that means. The judge in charge of who will enter eternal life, he is the one who qualifies you. What is there to worry about if God himself has called you holy in the waters of your baptism? What sin could disqualify you if God has fed you with forgiveness in his supper? What doubt are you possibly going to set against the words and promises of God in the Bible? So what if your heart condemns you? God is greater than your heart. And if he has pronounced you qualified for heaven through faith in Christ Jesus, then that is what you are, and your heart must stand silent at that proclamation. It must stand silent at the word found lying in that manger. After all, that word was made flesh and died for your sins so that God could pronounce you qualified for that eternal life. Through the word made flesh, that is, through Jesus Christ, you have also been delivered from darkness and transferred into the kingdom of God's beloved Son. This world may think it sees a, a similarity between the Christian celebration of the birth of the light of the world in Christ and the pagan celebration of the return of the light of the sun with the winter solstice. But the darkness that Christ saved us from has nothing to do with the changes of the season or with physical darkness at all. The darkness Christ has delivered you from is the darkness of your own sinful heart. And that's a darkness that's thicker and blacker than the darkness that surrounds us tonight. That darkness of sin blinds people so completely that they call evil good and good evil. I mean, just think about how the most heinous and perverted actions are defended and even applauded in this world, while those who believe in Christ and witness to, of him to others often suffer not only shame and ridicule, but even violence. That is the darkness of sin. But God has transferred you from that darkness into the kingdom of his beloved Son. As Jesus himself confessed, his kingdom is not of this world. Christ's kingdom is where he rules with his word. It is where he fills hearts with the joy and peace that come through that word. Those transferred to Christ's kingdom see the darkness of this world for what it is. And they live by the light of that word of God. In this life, our lives according to that word of God may be filled with failures. But we are always to remember that we are no longer under the domain or the rule of darkness. That means we should, not we should not embrace the darkness of sin, but struggle against it. You are to struggle against it because you see that God has made you a part of Christ's kingdom. Just as Christ is beloved by the Father, you too are now beloved by that Heavenly Father. From darkness to light. That's the message of Christmas. Not from the darkness of short and cold winter days to the greater light and warmth of the growing sun. Tonight we celebrate how the darkness of sin in this world is pierced by the light of God. Let us give thanks for that light from the Father. Let us give thanks that in Christ God has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints and has transferred you from the domain of darkness to the kingdom of his beloved Son.